that's true, it's tried, and it's proven. Faith is not something that's tangible. It's not something that you can see with your, na- oh God, with your natural eyes. But why in the world do you praise him like you praise him? Because you can't see the faith. You can't see what I see. I know this is not Christmas. I know this is not Advent, but I just want to ask about 15 of y'all. Do you see what I see? The reason why you can't praise him the way that I praise him is because you can't see what I see. Faith becomes a substance. It becomes a foundation. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to evening worship with Pastor Wes Taylor Jr. I'm so excited and elated that you've chimed into our program on today. I know that there is a word from the Lord for your life. It has nothing to do with Taylor. It has nothing to do with human agency. It has everything to do with the word of the Lord that says it will not go out void, but it will accomplish where to it is sent. I'm so confirmed about this word from the Lord for your life one today until I want to invite you to participate with us in the ministry of outreach and evangelism. You know the face of outreach and evangelism has changed in this current context. We no longer go door to door, but technology has allowed us and afforded us the ability to let our fingers do the walking. And so I want your fingers to do the walking and I want you to participate by being a share warrior. That's it. Yes, a share warrior. I want you to hit like, hit share, tag as many people as are in your contact list. And just to let them know that the word of God is about to be released. If you have not signed up for our YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and hit that bell so you will be updated on all of our latest ministry offerings. Yes, you can become a share warrior. You never know how far your share will go. You can share it with somebody that will share it with somebody that will share it with somebody that needs that word for that season in their life. And you would have been instrumental in providing for them that opportunity. It's time. Time for the word of the Lord. You still have time to call somebody, text them, tweet them, email them, holler across the room, holler across the street and let them know to get on this YLC network because there's about to be a releasing of the anointing of the word of God and they don't want to miss it. I want you to sit prayerfully and attentively and we will see you after the word of the Lord. Therefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. I want to tag this sermon on this morning with this topic. I give up. I give up. Y'all going to pray with me this morning. Oftentimes, that, that term, that term is, is, is somewhat of, it has a negative connotation. The term indicates that to some that, listen, I have reached the end of all I'm willing to do with the matter at hand. I've, I've reached the end of all of my resources, whether it be mental resource, financial resource, emotional resource, uh, physical resource, whatever resources they may, they may be. In other words, what, what the term indicates is that I've had enough of trying to resolve and to bring resolve to this matter at hand. And, and I'm at a point now, and I know that one or two of you have been in this point, I'm at a point now where I'm just saying, listen, I'm done. You ever, you ever been, you ever been to a place where you just said, look, I'm, I'm through. I'm, I'm tired of going back and forward with you or with it or with them. I am just done with the whole matter. Anybody ever been to that place where you just said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm through. You know, we'll tell folk in a minute, I'm through with you. Amen. I'm just so glad that God was never done with me. I'm glad I'm glad, I'm glad he didn't give me just a second chance, but he gave me another chance. I, I, I'm so good. Because, you know, we as human agency, you know, I ain't throwing no shade because all of us, you know, have been to that place at some point in our lives where we just, listen, I, I, I've, I've toiled with this enough. 
okay, I've, I've spent money, resources, I've given you help, I've tried to assist you along. It seems like the more I try to assist, it seems like the worse things get. And I'm just at the end of my mental resource, my psychological resource, my spirit, not my spiritual resource, my financial resource, my physical. I'm just done. The season of Lent brings us to a self-awareness of giving up something. The only challenge that I have, Barb, with the season of Lent is that we decide to give up something for 40 days. When the thing that we were giving up is most likely, it most likely has been a hindrance in some way, shape, or form to our lives, but then we decide that we're just going to give it up for a period of 40 days. But then after the 40 days, give me the remote. I want the one that I can speak into, ESPN, and then ESPN comes up on the screen after after the season of 40 days then we go back and we get the largest candy bar that we can get in Walmart after the period of 40 days we go back and we indulge I ain't gonna be popular this morning and we indulge more than we did previously because it's this mental thing that we have. I got to catch up. I ain't had these Doritos in a long time. So I'm going to get the family size Dorito bag. And I'm just going to sit down here and I, because I haven't had it in 40 days. I want, I want to push this give up stuff. I want, I want to push it a, a little bit this morning. Because uh, even though it is very pious for us to want to give up something for the season of reflection, we actually have to look at what our motives are in terms of why we're giving it up. Are we giving it up? Because on Ash Wednesday, we went to the priest and the priest rubbed some ashes on our head and we feel like this is just a pious thing to do. We have to evaluate, I told you this is self-reflection, we have to evaluate our self-motives. Why am I giving up chocolate? If I'm giving up chocolate for the wrong reasons, you might as well go ahead and go ahead and get you the big bag, the big, big thing of Reese's buttercups, peanut buttercups. If we're doing the right thing seemingly for the wrong reason, we will not get proper results. Can I talk a little bit this afternoon? We, we, we cannot get proper results doing seemingly the right thing, but for the wrong reasons. God says in the season of Lenten, I want to check, tailor your motives. So I'm going to send you the word and tell you what things I need you to really think about and, 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 and look at giving up. But this time, Taylor, I don't want you to give it up for a period of 40 days. I, I, I want you to give it up because it's becoming a hindrance to where I'm taking you. That, that's got to be a motivating factor. The reason why I'm giving up what I'm giving up is because it has proven to be something that has been a hindrance or has been a blockage to me moving in the will of God. So now here comes Paul talking to this Hebrew church. And he uses the terminology he says, wherefore, in verse number 12. And the wherefore is, is packed with information because you cannot indulge chapter number 12 without first absorbing and understanding chapter number 11. He gives us reason. Glory to God. Gives us reason. He gives us reason. I'm getting too excited because I know where I'm going, y'all. Y'all hang in there and I'm going to come and get you. He gives us reason 
in verse number, number 11. So whenever we come to verse number 12, he starts out with wherefore. Now, I cannot proceed reading verse number 12 without going back to number 11 because of the statement wherefore. Wherefore? He said, wait, 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 wait. There's something wherefore talks about. There's something that precedes this. There's something that comes before this. There's, there, there's something that I must evaluate in order for me to really obtain and understand and embrace the fullness of what God is about to present to me. And so, verse number 11, he begins to talk about faith is the substance. God if you need some my God if you need some proof if, if you need a reason he said faith becomes the substance of things that are hopeful and the evidence my God or oh, my God Apostle Taylor used to say or the approving of things not seen I ain't seen it yet but my faith has already embraced it and he begins to talk about the halls of faith faith substance is something that I can hold on to it's something that I can embrace it's something that's true it's tried and it's proven faith is not something that's tangible it's not something that you can see with your na- oh God with your natural eyes but why in the world do you praise him like you praise him because you can't see the faith you can't see what I see I know this is not Christmas I know this is not Advent but I just want to ask about 15 of y'all do you see what I see the reason why you can't praise him the way that I praise him is because you can't see what I see faith becomes substance it becomes a foundation it becomes a substratum it becomes the, the, the basis by which I prove that what God has said to me is going to come to pass so he starts off in verse number 12 by sending us to oh, chapter number 12 by sending us back to chapter number 11 and every now and then the next chapter of your life God I praise you in here is based upon looking back at the previous chapter of your life because the next chapter of your life may not have started off well but you can look back to your previous chapter because if God did it before Woo, God, every, every now and then you got to check your resume. Check where God brought you out of before. And if he brought you out of before, he can do it again. My God, you're in a storm right now. But look back on the last chapter of your life. You didn't think you were going to make it the last time. You didn't think that you were going to be here the last time. You didn't think that you were going to have victory the last time. But look at you. You are undefeated at survival. <laughs> Holler somebody and tell them you undefeated. You, you got the heavyweight belt. Yes, you do. You, you a bad man. You a bad woman. The enemy thought he was going to take you out. But what the devil meant for evil, God has a way of turning. Oh, God, I ain't talking to everybody. But I promise you I'm talking to somebody that the devil meant for evil. But when you looked around again, God had turned that thing around for you. They talked about you. But God elevated you. My God, you your haters became elevators. How many of you in here understand that God can turn it around for your good? I'm getting too excited. So he he said you he said I need you to know in order in order for you to get chapter number twelve you got you really got to embrace chapter number eleven. Faith becomes your reason. Faith becomes your why. Oh glory to God. Deacon, why are you smiling like that? Because you got faith in something. You know that it might not look good but right now, but in your spirit, it already broke. My God. See, that's what faith does. Faith looks in the spirit. It doesn't look on the outside. It doesn't, it doesn't get informed by the periphery, but it looks on the inside. Whenever there's a break in your spirit, it's just a matter of time, y'all. Like, oh, God, I, I don't know who this is for, but it's just a matter of time that when it breaks in your spirit, it's going to break out in your home. Glory to God. When it breaks in your spirit, it's 
it's just a matter of time that it's going to break out in your finances. My God, I don't know who that was for. It's just a matter of time that when it breaks out in your spirit, it's going to break out in your relationship. When it breaks in your spirit, it's going to break in your body. When it breaks in your spirit, it's going to break in your mind. I need you to throw your head back and throw your hands up and say something's about to break. So he says, I'm going to give you a reason why. If you need a testimony, he said, you got to look back at chapter number 11. He said, I'm going to give you some testimony. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call on Abel. Because Abel, by faith, was able because he often unto God a more perfect sacrifice. That ain't enough. Ain't let me call on Enoch. Come here, Enoch. Come on, let me talk to you, Enoch. Let me hit you up with an email. I'm going to text you real good. Enoch, give me your testimony. The Bible said Enoch was translated by faith. Take care of y'all both. Woo! <laughs> My God, how many of you know? How many of you know y'all gonna get this right here? How many of you? How many, how many of you know that your faith will translate you? Your faith will transfer you. Your faith will transform you. The only thing you have to do is activate your faith, and your faith will transform you above every situation, every circumstance. The circumstance is the same, but the thing has changed because I put my faith on it. My God. He talked about Noah. Called on Noah. Called on Abraham. Then he comes in chapter number 12 for the interest of time, y'all, because I, I feel like working chapter 11 a little bit more. But I better, I better get back to my, to my text here. He comes in verse number 12 and he said, before I release to you what I'm about to release to you, I need you to understand that there are some folk that came before you that got through worse of what you've been through. Ah, oh, Lord. That's why some of you got to hold on. Because somebody's ability and willingness to hold on it's based upon seeing you hold on. I can hold on because I saw Elder Crosby hold on. Believe I can make it a little bit longer now because I saw what Deacon Hutchinson was going through. But he still got his head. Every now and then you have to look at folk around you. And, and, and you got to hold on because... You holding on will give somebody else the audacity to be able to hold on. I need you to social distance, testify to somebody and tell them don't you dare give up. I need you to survive. I'm, I'm almost done here, y'all. I know where I'm going. I'm almost, I need you to survive. I'm going to look at it. Say, say, say it like the young folks say. Say, look here, I'm going to need you to hold on. I'm, I'm, stretch your eyes at them. Yeah, stretch your eyes at them real good. And say, look, I'm going to need you to hold on. Don't you dare think about giving up. Don't you dare th think about throwing in a towel. Because I need you to survive. So he comes here in verse number 12, y'all. And he said, listen, I want to push this thing a little bit. You know, it's okay to give up something for, for 40 days. And that's, that's wonderful. That's good. And you throw a new shade. But if you give up something for 40, day, 40 days, it's not perpetual. It's not permanent. God says, what I'm about to bring to you I'm going to bless you one time for the rest of your life. I don't know. I'm going to bless you one time for the rest of your life. When, when I bless you this time, you're going to be blessed in the city. You're going to be blessed in the field.
You're going to be blessed when you come. You're going to be blessed when you go. Everywhere the soles of your feet trod. He said, I'm going to give it to you. I need somebody to pick their foot up right now and just stop it. Whatever that thing is, God says, I'm going to give it to you. So he says, look back at verse 11. He said, he said, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, instead of you giving up on fruit loops, instead of you giving up some chocolate, giving up playing your PlayStation. God says, I want to give you something. I want to give you some keys that will help you to be victorious the rest of your life. He said, the first thing I need you to do is I need you to give up, number one, unnecessary hindrances. Now everybody on here on Facebook, on YouTube, and that have gathered here that's physical in this sanctuary today, everybody has something in their lives that's just unnecessary. Amen. Here is what the Lord did. I'm, I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done. I feel, I feel like dancing up in here. He said, he said, the first thing you have to give up is you have to give up unnecessary hindrances. Here's what the text said. He said, because you have a group of folk that you can reference that has been successful at grabbing hold of faith and persevering in the things of me. He said, I want you, I charge you to lay aside. Here is what the Bible did not say. He did not say that he was going to take it off of you. Take it from me, Jesus. No, I'm not going to do that. I can, but I'm just not. Because... There is a responsibility that we have to our deliverance. If I, every time you got into something, Taylor, took it off of you, then you would easily get back into it. But when I make you participate in your own deliverance, I don't know who that is for right there. When I cause you, Taylor, to participate in your own deliverance, then you will appreciate your come out. When I cause you to participate in your own deliverance, you will appreciate your deliverance even the more. So he says, I can take that from you. But what I need you to do I want you to lay aside every unnecessary hindrance. That is what a weight is. A weight, unless you are training, is an unnecessary hindrance. Let, let me bring it on home, y'all. Let me bring it on home. I got too much content that, that, that I do for time here. Some of us have got the weight of people's opinion. Some of us have got the weight of faulty and unproductive relationships. God says, no, I can take it from you. But it's going to be more productive to your future. If you participate in the deliverance that you're asking me for. Oh, that, that, that's what I'm talking That's what Lent is all about. Season of reflection. He said, I want you to lay aside, take off any unnecessary hindrance. 
laid aside. Now, 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 here is the, the crutch. Here, here's the matter. He's asking us to lay it aside for the simple reason that when you are connected with God, you're connected with a progressive force. God is always, he's always interested in progress. He did not link himself and hook himself and join himself with us to keep us where we are. God is a God of progress. Because he is a God of progress, then he can say, lay that aside. Because he knows that if you lay it aside and stick with him, you're going to progress beyond that thing. We can lay something aside and if we don't progress, it'll still be there within our reach. Let me just say this and I'm going to move on to the next point. God is taking some things out of your reach. He, he's allowing you to move out, outside of the reach of some things. Because it would be so easy because y'all, we have a tendency to desire the things we desire. And so he says, I need you to lay that aside because I'm going to progress you in this. But it's not going to be me taking it off of you. It's going to be you taking it off and laying it down. So first of all, I got to give up unnecessary hindrances. According to the word, second thing I have to give up in this Lenten season is I have to give up relationship prohibiting lifestyles. Relationship prohibiting lifestyles. What we get that from? It's right in the text. I'm not leaving this text. I'm going to be right here. He said, first of all, I want you to lay aside unnecessary hindrances. Every weight, weight, unnecessary hindrance. But he said, that's not it. That's not all. I need you to give up unproductive and relationship prohibiting lifestyles. He said, and the sin. Now notice he did not categorize a particular sin. He did not pluralize the word sin. He did not say sins. Can, can I come to your address? Can, can I come right on Taylor's address? Can I come to right to my step? Everybody's got something that you need to get rid of. From the pulpit to the door. From the ceiling to the, oh, I know we're looking nice and pious in here today. But everybody's got a thing. I, I know we got our hats on and we have our ties on and we got our big old crosses on, you know, and the whole nine yards. But, but, but everybody has a thing. I don't want you to just stop at laying aside unnecessary hindrances. But I want you to do a self-reflection. I got to stop right here because I don't have time. I got like five more things to talk about, y'all, and I ain't, got, I ain't got enough time for it. He said, I want you to live. I don't want you to stop at just hindrances. But there's something. What is that thing? What is that thing that sin that causes or prohibits relationship with me. Why? Why do you say that, Pastor? Because let me tell you something about sin. Sin puts a wedge in the relationship between us and God. 
God cannot tolerate sin. Well, Pastor, that's just how I am. God cannot tolerate sin. Well, Pastor, you don't know, you know, what I had, what I went through when I was a little boy, a little girl, and the things that I had to God cannot tolerate sin. Well, Pastor, nobody knows about it. God cannot tolerate sin. Well, well Pastor, you know I preached last week. God cannot tolerate sin. So he says, I want you to lay aside that hindrance, that weighty matter. That thing that keeps you weighed down. Weighed down so you can't sleep at night. Weighed down so you can't think during the day. Weighed down so you can't deliberate and make good decisions. Then I want you, this is inside look, y'all. This has nothing to do with your neighbor. It has everything to do with Taylor. It has everything to do with you. He said, I want you to, I, I want you to, you know, listen. Let, let me be real, y'all. Let me be real. Then I'm, I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done, y'all. Because I got, listen. For real, for real. We don't have to search for that thing. Oh, don't y'all get cute on me in here. Don't, we, we don't, well, let me think. Let me see. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what that, oh. Contrary to popular thought and popular opinion, we, we, we know. We, we, we just not willing to first give an honor to Christ. Spirit of Christ, the pastor, saints, and friend. We ain't willing to stand up in the sanctuary and raise our hand and testify about it. But we know. We don't have to. Lord, show it to me. You know, some of us can get real deep. Lord, show it to me. Shine a light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything. That shouldn't be taken out, Jesus. You don't have to search that far. We know what that thing is. But can I give you some encouragement? Can I give you some encouragement? Whatever that is, it is hindering the relationship that we have with Christ. Well, I pray every day that thing is hindering the relationship that we have in Christ. I'm going to do one more, y'all, and I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. I promise you I'm going to be done. First of all, I got to live. We talk about Lent, y'all. We talk about Lent. Talking about inside reflection being a period of penitence. I have to lay aside unnecessary hindrances. He said, for, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. We have to also lay aside or give up relationship prohibiting lifestyles and the sin that does so easily beset us. The next thing that we have to give up, y'all, in this season of Lent, is we have to give up lethargic behavior. Pastor, what? Lethargic means lazy. We can't be in Christ and be lazy. Sluggish. Apathetic. When we are in Christ, this people of God is an aggressive fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. Therefore, take off the weight and put on the armor. 
Where you get that from, Pastor? Right here in the text. He said, lay aside every weight. I'm done. I'm done, y'all. He said, give up the thing that is causing you unnecessary hindrance, the weight. He said, give up the relationship prohibiting lifestyle that is sin. And he said, give up lazy behavior. Where did it come from? He said, now you have to run. I can't be lazy in this fight because it's aggressive. All right, let me bring it on home and then I'm going to bring it on home. People of God, those of you watching my Facebook and YouTube and those that are here gathered today, we cannot afford to take days off. My fight has to be aggressive every day. I cannot be lethargic. I cannot be slothful. I cannot be sluggish in my approach to engaging this battle. What are you saying, Taylor? I'm saying that you have an enemy that is relentless. People of God, we cannot afford to take time off. I'm not suggesting that you need to come and fill up every auditorium and every church. You can't do that no more. But how many of you know that the kingdom agenda is not relegated to a building anymore? Baby, you got to learn how to work at home. Lord have mercy. You, you have to learn how to do some telework. I'm not in the building, but I'm still working. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you got to learn how to pray while you're at home. You have to learn how to worship while you're at home. Warfare does not stop because we're not in a building. So the Lord says here, I need you to lay aside slothful behavior because the enemy as a roaring lion is seeking whom he may devour. I'm going to give you the last three points and I'm, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to give them to you so you have them. We have to give up slothful behavior. We have to give up impatience. I want to stop that, but I'm not even going to do it. We have to give up impatience. He said, and run with patience. We have to give up in this season. This is the last one I'm done, for real. We have to give up choosing our own path. Choosing our own direction. People of God, we can't choose our own direction. The Lord says, and run with patience the race that is set before you. We cannot choose our own direction. We have to give up control over our own destiny. Glory to God. Because God says, I have your destiny in my hand. I've set before you a race to run. And I cannot choose which direction and which race I want to run. We have to give up y'all the right that we have acquired on our own to choose our own path. Well, welcome back. The word of the Lord has gone out and it will not come back void, but it will accomplish whereto it is sent. Perhaps the target of that word today was the fertile soil of your heart. If perhaps this word has gone out and it has pricked your heart, 
and you have not come into full realization of a relationship with God and you've decided on this day, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want you to put that in the comments. I surrender and someone will reach out to you and walk you through the next steps of discipleship. If this message of hope has been a blessing to you, I want you to consider planting a seed of faith so that we can continue our programming, so that we can continue to propagate the message of hope to a dying world. The methods by which you may give are on the screen right now. Please, ma'am, please, sir, use one of those methods and plant a seed of faith so that we can continue to propagate the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, our time is up. I have enjoyed once again this day, this evening with you. Thank you for tuning in to Evening Worship with Pastor Wes Taylor Jr. We will see you on next week, next Sunday at 4 p.m. God bless you.